work based on the National Curriculum Level Descriptors. So we're going to be looking at Level 7 Algebra. To be able to expand double brackets, first off let's look at something like this. If you see something outside of a bracket, it means you have to multiply everything inside by what's outside. In other words, you have to multiply the 6 by the x, and the 6 by the minus 3. So in this case, outside the bracket of x plus 5 is both the x and the 3. So the x plus 5 has to be multiplied by both of these terms, by the x, and the x plus 5 must also be multiplied by the plus 3. So we've got x times x, x times 5, plus 3 times x, plus 3 times plus 5. You should also appreciate that the two middle terms can be grouped together to become plus 8x. Let's have a look at this one. Outside the bracket of y minus 6 is both y and plus 5. So the y minus 6 needs to be multiplied by the y, and the y minus 6 also needs to be multiplied by the plus 5. y multiplied by y is y squared. y multiplied by minus 6 is minus 6y. y multiplied by plus 5 is plus 5y. And minus 6 multiplied by plus 5 is minus 30. In this case, the two middle terms, minus 6y plus 5y, grouped together become minus 1y. No need to write the minus 1. So, both of these terms need to be multiplied by both of these terms. And that's what we're saying when we write that line down. But you don't have to write that line. So let's multiply the a by the a. And now let's multiply the minus 4 by the a. Now let's multiply the, th the a by the minus 3, and let's multiply the minus 4 by the minus 3. The two middle terms this time, minus 4a and minus 3a, minus 7a. Expanding double brackets. Now, before I go onto this page, let's look at this. This is called expanding, but when you go the other way, it's called factorising. So, we need to factorise expressions with indices greater than 1. So, these little numbers are called indices, or powers, and they're sometimes greater than 1. So, let's factorise these. Let's look at the number first. 3 goes into 15 and 3 goes into 6. So let's take that outside the bracket. We've also got a, b squared and a, b. So a, b is also a factor that can go outside. What are we left with here? We're left with a 5 and a b, appreciating that this 3ab multiplied by 5b is the 15ab squared. What are we left with here? Well, 3, 2 is a 6, so we need a 2 there. But we don't need anything else. These two multiplied together are in fact that. What do we got here? We have a common factor of 4 in the 12 and the 8. S t cubed. S squared t squared. The common factor is actually S t squared. So what are we left with here? 4 threes are 12. And st squared times t would be the t cubed. 4 twos are 8. And if we put an s there, I think you'll find that that's right. You can always check these by multiplying them out again. What have we got here? Well, there's no common fact with 9 and 8. But with p cubed q to the power 4 and p q to the power 3, what have we got to, as a common factor there? We've got p q cubed. 
so I think we'll need a P squared Q there just check it P times P squared is P cubed Q cubed times Q is Q to the power 4 what are we going to need there? sorry I've pointed the wrong thing we're actually going to need nothing because that is in fact it isn't it let's move on to this one we have a common factor with 12 and 18 of 6 what have we of a common factor here? Six times two will give me twelve. C to the power two times that c to the power two we see the power four. Six threes are eighteen. So what are we going to have here? As I said just now, you can always check these before you leave them to make sure they work. Six twos are twelve. C squared times c squared is c to the power four and d cubed. And now multiply these two together. 6 threes are 18. C squared d to the power 4. To draw graphs to show equations. Now there are certain graphs you should better draw just straight away. And others you have to work out. These we should be able to draw. We should know that x equals 6 goes straight down the page through x equals 6. Let's label that. We should know that y equals 3 goes straight across the page through y equals 3. So let's label that. We should know that x plus y equals 4 goes through the coordinates that add up to 4. And 4 plus 0 1 plus 3, 2 plus 2, etc. will add up to 4. So that is x plus y equals 4. x equals y, or y equals x, must go through the points 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and so on. Because the y equals the x. And y equals minus x will go like that. So these are graphs that you should know and be able to draw without a thought. Whereas any other graph doesn't even have to be a straight line graph. But any other graph can be drawn by finding coordinates through which it must pass. So let's have a look at this one. If we give x the value of 1, we can work out the y as being 3 1's plus 2. If we give x the value of 2, we can work out y as being 3 2's plus 2. And if we give x any value, let's give x the value of 0. And then y will have a value of 3 0's plus 2. So in other words, if we plot these points, then that means to say that is going to be the graph of y equals 3x plus 2. So to draw any graph you can draw it by giving x a series of values and working out the corresponding y values using the equation. But sometimes the equation is such that giving it particular values can be rather useful. So let's have a look at this one. And if it's a straight line, you actually only need two points. We only do a third one to just check that we haven't made a mistake. But this is very special. Because both 3 and 4 are factors of 12, you can get two very nice answers by putting x equal to 0 and working it out. So this is 0, 4y equals 12, y itself therefore is 3. And then putting y equal to 0. This will then be 0 and you'll have 3x equals 12, so x equals 4. Because 3 and 4 are both factors of 12, we get a lovely situation of two coordinates we can plot quite easily. So there's 0, 3 and there's 4, 0. So that will be the graph 
with this equation. 